most people would probably call The Queen's Gambit a show about chess. And I would say yes and no. It's certainly a show centered on chess with chess players and chess tournaments. Chess is the subject matter. But like many types of stories, there are deep underlying themes and values that use subject matter as a platform to tell us what the story is really about. And the way I see it, The Queen's Gambit is not just a show about chess, but a show that uses chess to showcase control, and specifically the conflict between control and neglect. In this analysis, I'm going to break down two of my favorite scenes from the show to showcase the brilliant writing and to illustrate the theme of control. Let's dive into the Queen's Gambit. Now, let's be clear, there are lots of ways the conflict between control and neglect surfaces in the Queen's Gambit. Chess is, of course, a game that's all about control, as strategy and wits are key to determining which player gains control of the board. When our protagonist, Elizabeth Harmon, was a young girl, she witnesses her mother slowly losing control over her own life, eventually resulting in her mother's suicide. There's a cold open where Beth's mother advises her to take control of life before someone else does. Someday you're gonna be all alone. So you need to figure out how to take care of yourself. And finally, a recurring plot device in the show is drug and alcohol addiction, which ironically contributes to Beth gaining control over the chessboard, but losing control over her life outside of chess. In these next two scene breakdowns, I'll be analyzing how control is a recurring value even in the simplest of conversations. It's so much more exciting than I imagined. The theme of control is pretty much made obvious to us in this scene in episode 3, where Beth is being interviewed interviewed for the paper, you'll recognize it from the trailer. And I like this scene for several reasons. Firstly, it's an expositional scene where Beth tells us what she really thinks about chess. But writer Scott Frank frames it as an interview come photo shoot, so it gives Beth something to do while she's explaining, and makes the scene feel organic and free-flowing. The quick reverse cuts and the intense flashes from the camera are disorienting and not only represents Beth's meteoric rise to fame in the chess world, but also foreshadows the gradual loss of control that Beth will eventually have to deal with as she gets more successful. The most important part of this scene is the conversation between Beth and the interviewer. When we first see them, it's clear that the interviewer is envious of Beth's success and uses a condescending tone throughout. Because she's the one asking questions, the conversation starts and ends with the interviewer in control. Even so, it's clear that she doesn't care that much about this interview, shown when she nonchalantly lights a cigarette in Beth's bedroom. I know it was the 60s guys, but in film and TV, characters do things for a reason. To her credit, Beth doesn't appear bothered either because she has experience dealing with others who have doubted her before, or because she's focusing on posing for the camera. Now here comes the interesting part. When the interviewer asks her a question about what the chess pieces represent, notice how Beth momentarily shifts the conversation to control it herself. And anyway, it was the board I noticed first. The board? Yes. It's an entire world of just 64 squares. I feel safe in it. I can control it. I can dominate it. And it's predictable. So if I get hurt, I only have myself to blame. The interviewer becomes genuinely intrigued for the first time in the scene, and the camera very subtly lingers on Beth a little longer, such that in this scene, Beth has the most uninterrupted airtime when delivering this line. Other than directly telling the audience that chess is a way for Beth to control her world, even a simple scene like this presents one of the many examples of control shifting in the interactions of our characters, which is something that we see throughout all episodes. Let's look at one more scene breakdown where control is a more subtle theme. One of my favorite scenes is not really a scene, but an entire sequence of three scenes in episode 4, where Beth plays chess against Georgi Girev at the Mexico City tournament. 
Again, this sequence is significant for a few reasons. First, this is the first opponent we see in a series that is noticeably younger than Beth. Secondly, it's the first time there is actual focus on a game in Mexico City so far, with all previous games being nothing more than pieces in a longer montage. The editing here is great, as the speed of the opening and the rising music conveys intensity and competition, indicating that Jeref, like Beth, is a formidable opponent. This is supported by the crossfade to evening light and the hunched posture of Beth, showing that she has struggled to break Jeref down, the implication being that she hasn't gained the control that she needs and is forced to adjourn. Now we're treated to a short break between scenes where Beth is in her hotel room, but the key moment in this sequence is near the end of her game with Jeref, where she decisively beats him within minutes. We can tell that Beth has now exerted full control over her opponent, from the way she stands up and towers over him, to the way she confidently moves her pieces without even letting us see the actual move, to the way she arrogantly walks around while waiting for her opponent's eventual loss. And then comes what I think is the most intriguing exchange of this scene. If you win, what will you do next? I don't understand. If you're world champion at 16, what will you do with the rest of your life? Beth asks what Jeref will do after he becomes world champion, and... I don't understand. He doesn't know. He doesn't know because he hasn't looked ahead and contemplated life beyond chess. At this point in the series, Beth has yet to face her biggest obstacles, and honestly, still has a lot to learn. But this scene shows us a new dimension of Beth that extends beyond your average protagonist. It's one of the first times Beth implicitly thinks about how she will build her own future beyond chess, and foreshadows what becomes a shift in priorities after this episode, which is appropriately the point of the series. Where Beth previously had control over the chessboard, she would soon need to think about control over her future in general. Well, chess isn't the only thing in life. If you think about it, in a meta sense, movies and TV shows are themselves isolated pieces of art, with a start and an end, and it's usually up to the viewer to imagine what happens to the characters after the credits roll. This scene and this line by Beth is, to me, a playful nod that Beth's journey definitely goes beyond what we see in the last episode, and that her character is thinking of life beyond the confines of the show, making this scene one of the more interesting and reflective ones. The Queen's Gambit is full of scenes like these which are written, directed, and edited pretty masterfully, with the theme of control being the DNA that holds the show together. I'm not a chess player myself, but from what I hear, the attention to detail is also impeccable in terms of the way chess matches are carried out. I don't think the show is absolutely perfect, but with its thematic consistency, solid writing, and a perfect performance from Anya Taylor-Joy, I completely I completely understand why The Queen's Gambit was one of the most talked about shows of 2020. Owen, I have every confidence. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed that breakdown. This is the first time I'm covering a TV show, so a very interesting experience for me. It's more like a seven hour movie to be fair. But if you like The Queen's Gambit or you like this video, then let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion with you. I'll be back with a new video soon. So until next time, have a great week ahead, maximum hype, and I'll see you soon.